Good morning from the Fushimi Inari Shrine. There are Inari Shrines all over Japan, and they always have this familiar fox guardian. But the special thing about Fushimi Inari is there are literally thousands of red Tori gates. So let's go check them out. This is the head shrine to over 30,000 Inari shrines in Japan. It's most well known for the Sinbon Torii Trail, where about 10,000 Torii gates lead up to the top of the sacred Mount Inari. This is it then. I reckon I've walked through about 50 maybe of these thousands of gates. And at some point the gates are so close together that you can't really see out the side, so it looks like a, almost like a solid red tunnel. And there's all kind of different age of the Tory gates. You've got the really, really old stone ones. And you've got some which look on like um, kind of faded wood. And then you've got the bright, brand spanking new ones, shiny and red. Wow, how bizarre. As soon as you walk in the tunnel, it feels kind of cold. Isn't it incredible? You see what I mean about the kind of solid lines, right? There's very, very small spacing that I could fit my hand through at the side, but when you look from that angle, it looks like one solid wall. The team head to Gion, Kyoto's most famous geisha district. Here, visitors can experience a transformation into an apprentice geisha known as a maiko. Natalie has been traveling with Dean on this adventure since day one. She met him while working in South Korea as a model and dancer, and is fascinated by Japanese culture. Lower, lower, lower. Perfect. Oh, that, thank you. Do that. Yes, please. I'm dumb. That should have happened earlier. Chin down. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie looks fantastic. I think she should be a Maiko every day. I was actually going to try Maiko, but then I realized with this beard, it would have just looked terrible. The transformation generally includes traditional hair and makeup wearing an authentic kimono, a photo shoot to capture the moment, and a stroll around the old streets of Kyoto. Wow, so she really looks amazing and, and quite natural in this Maiko pattern, huh? Very <laughs> beautiful. Ah, Natalie. She says you're beautiful. You're beautiful. Is it what you imagine Kyoto to be? Mm, it's very cute. Lots of small houses. And Temples everywhere. Yeah, you can feel you're in Japan. Incredible. It's beautiful. Evening falls on Kyoto City, and the teams seek out the local food culture. eating something called obanzai ryori. Now, ryori is a type of food. Obanzai is a difficult one to translate, but it comes out as something like homemade cuisine. Round one, fresh vegetables on ice. Round two, the eggplant in a miso sauce, grilled. Mm-hmm. Wow, so right here there is a plethora of vegetables, super healthy things basically, really, really healthy things. One of my favorite things about Japanese food is very often what you'll get is this lacquer tray and then on top of that a lot of small plates containing a variety of dishes, everything from meat, to sashimi, salad, uh, this is sesame tofu, it's like having a buffet right in front of you and you just get a little balanced piece of everything. It's just like Japanese grandma might make. It's time to 
Kyoto is the first place most foreigners head for their Japanese experience. Still one of the biggest cities in Japan and for a thousand years the capital. Yet somehow it has miraculously preserved its culture, history and spiritual significance. We think that from the elegance of its temples and from the beauty and refinement of the geisha, the soul of Japan found here in Kyoto is Miyabi, a Japanese traditional aesthetic and a word that epitomizes grace.